And these guys are going to fire. Boom. Oh shit, it goes to the fortifications. Oh no. Oh my god. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I do my base defense and how I separate the different areas of my fort. But first, let me show you a little diagram of how I separate everything. So these gray circles, they represent areas. These, they represent bridges. These and these, they represent little rooms or hallways. And these red circles, they represent sources of danger. So that's where we get, you know, invading armies or monsters or wild animals. So to get to my base from the surface, there's a, a bridge here, just in case. It's just another layer of protection. But they have to go through a long hallway uh, that is exposed to like ballista fire. And this hallway is also three tiles wide. So once we become a barony and we get the big three by three caravans, uh, they can get to our trade depot uh, through this uh, three tile wide hallway. This hallway cannot have any like cage traps or weapon traps because they block the pathing for the trade caravan but they, they can have ballistas and they can have other things like weaponized forgotten beasts like i teached in my other video how to capture and weaponize them and then if you're coming from the caverns uh first of all there are three separate bridges for each of the cavern layers and also i don't connect the caverns to each other uh sometimes they come connected with uh caves naturally that's okay if that happens but i used to uh just punch a hole through the three cavern layers and just make them accessible through each other but then i make it so that if a creature wants to go from cavern three to cavern two or cavern one they have to go through this trap hallway here and then they'll get trapped or they'll get killed by a weapon trap And it's good to have a way to independently seal each of the caverns. And of course, the late game spoilery stuff, clowns. I'm not going to talk much about it because I want to avoid giving new players spoilers. Uh, but if I do go to the circus, then I go through the ballista hallway. Since, you know, funny clowns, they are uh, immune to traps. Uh, but they're not immune to ballista fire. So I'm going to leave this diagram uh available to you guys. I'm going to put the link in the description. If you want to see it, you can use it or you can adapt it to whatever you want to do. Uh, but this is the basic flow of things. So let's get started. So usually we start the game in the center-ish of the map. So since I like to make those long uh, hallways, I like to start off from the side here. So I'm going to start by channeling down the 3x3 three three hallway, which is going to be this hallway here. And the bridge, we can co cover this hole with the bridge later. Uh, so I'm going to go down, forward, down, forward, down, forward, until we reach stone, essentially. Okay, so this is silt. This is already stone. We're on the stone layer. Yeah, this should be deep enough. Okay, so now I'm going to start digging the tunnel. Okay, so I have designated the dig orders. Uh, so if we go down this three tile wide ramp for the future caravans that we're gonna have, uh, you can see here. Uh, so this area here is supposed to be dug out, but since you know we're just starting out, we don't need this big hallway for now. I'm just gonna like cancel these dig orders so they don't go digging here because it's gonna take a lot of time and. Right now, we just need to set up the base. So let's say we have an evading army. So they're gonna go down this ramp. This here is a shortcut. Uh, there's gonna be a bridge here, which is gonna be open usually, uh, but we can close it. So once we close the bridge here, the creature will have to go through this long hallway here and then go around and then go back. So these are gonna be ballistas. Uh, and it's going to be connected to a whole area with arrows so they can rearm the ballistas and they're going to fire. So as you can see, it's like one, two, three ballistas and they shoot in the middle. So they cover the whole hallway with, you know, ballistas here. And they're going to go around and if they are still alive, they're going to meet the army here in our barracks. 
again bridge here we close it once the bridge is closed they're forced to go around this area here in the middle we're gonna um, put fortifications on these walls here and we're gonna have an arrow stockpile underground here so we're gonna put our mark stores here in this middle area and since the walls are gonna have fortification holes they can shoot through at enemies and of course they can only access this little area through the barracks so like in the diagram this part here is gonna have a bridge so if the invading creatures they go all the way around and they survive we can just seal this and just shoot at them through the fortifications here and we're gonna be completely safe so the trade caravan area is already built so we can already build it so now I'm gonna put a bridge here so I like to make my bridges nice and big because it's easy to differentiate when they're uh, open and close so I'm gonna add a barracks here because in the future it's gonna be our barracks I'm gonna assign the squad so they are training I'm going to start to make our dining hall. I'm going to make it small like this, but I can expand it after. So I place a temporary stone workers workshop here uh, in the middle of the dining hall. It's going to be close to the stone uh, since I'm making furniture anyways. Once I deconstruct it, the furniture that I'm going to use to build is going to be all here. I'm going to ask them to make a couple of doors, a couple of tables, a couple of thrones. So there's going to be a bridge here at the end, and this is going to be my trap hallway. And on these three parts here, I'm going to put uh, stairways down so I can go to the different caverns. Okay, so I think I got this. So path one goes here, then down here, then cavern one. Cool. Path two uh, goes here, then down here, then through cavern one. Then down here, then cavern two. And then the third one goes down here, then here, through cavern one, and then I think here, through cavern two, and then here, cavern three. Okay. It's not really necessary if you find this to be too annoying, you don't have to do this. This is just me being OCD. Uh, but I think it's pretty nice. I'm gonna finish digging the dining area and I'm gonna start making the forges. Okay, so since I don't want to do anything with the caverns, I just pulled all the three levers here. These are all sealed and I also linked this one and named this seal all caverns. So this one seals all the caverns. So I'm gonna make some wooden cages here. Maybe just like Four for now should be enough so we can start placing traps here uh, so now that I have coke I'm gonna make some nickel mine carts so I think it's other objects nickel mine cart I'm gonna set it on repeat I have brought some nickel bars from embark because nickel is not too expensive and I believe it is magma safe so I can start carting uh, magma up here Okay, so for the siege part of our defenses, we're going to need, first of all, to train some siege operators and then to make some really good um, ballista parts. So to train our siege operators, we're going to use catapults because they use stone for ammo, so it's not expensive at all. So we're going to make three catapults here. I think uh, catapults require three catapult parts, which are made out of wood. So we're gonna make nine catapult parts. So I'll just make an order for it. Catapult parts, and then I'm gonna make nine. Also our magma minecart area here, it's ready to go. So I'll just uh, channel here and here. I'm gonna drain the magma, beautiful. And I have some minecarts with magma. Perfect. Okay, so I have my catapult parts. So I'm going to make three catapults here. 
because you're gonna need to train three siege engineers. You know what? Let's train four. I guess it's good to train four. I said three because we're gonna have three ballistas on each corridor. So once the enemies are coming through here, uh, they're gonna man these three ballistas here and they're gonna shoot. And then once the enemies go around, then they're gonna man these three. But it's good to have four guys trained because once they get to legendary status, you know, stuff happens like maybe one of them drinks too much and dies or something. It's good, so we don't have like just two siege engineers. So we're gonna train four. So the catapult parts are done. So we're gonna make our four catapult parts. So it's military catapult, and then we we'll place them. I think here, two, three, here, one, two, three, here, one, two, three. We actually need two more. So they're facing this side, but we can uh, change their direction once they're built. And then I'm gonna get some migrants and make them uh, siege operators, dedicated siege operators. So they won't do anything else. Uh, they'll just train for their entire lives. So siege operating, I just created a custom work detail. I'm gonna name it uh, siege op. And then I'm just gonna get some like useless guys like this spotter here, uh, wax worker, animal caretaker, uh, and this fisherman here. So four guys. And they're only the selected people will do this and they would just do that. They will do nothing else. And they become, they'll become really good. So this is built. So I'm gonna make it face south and I'm gonna set it to fire it at will. Yeah, fire it at will. So one of the siege operator guys is going to come here and just fire away. So I don't know if that's true just for uh, crossbows or for everything, every projectile. Uh, but I think if they fire it at a channel, so like there's a level down below here, I believe that um, the, the, the rock is not destroyed. Either that or it's never destroyed. I don't know. But I like to make it like this. Yeah, so this guy is loading the catapult and then he fires it. So they're gonna keep doing that forever. And then I'll make their dormitories like here. So it's four guys. So I'm gonna make four nice rooms here. So I got the three bedrooms here and I'm gonna assign them to my three siege operators here. So siege op one, siege op two, Siege up three, siege up four. Then come here and just find them. One, two, three, four. Good. So now they're gonna sleep here. They're gonna be here all day. Oh, you know what? I think I set up the this part wrong. So I'm setting up the the rocks in front of them. So that means that it creates a lot of hauling orders because people are gonna get the rocks from here. And put them here but if I cancel the stockpile uh, and if I make a rock stockpile here at the bottom and just let it have like microcline and claystone then uh, there will be shooting the rocks into the stockpile and no one's gonna come to pick them up because they're already in the stockpile so it doesn't matter we're gonna need to smooth and add fortifications to these walls here so we're gonna be shooting from this this and this right center of this the center of this and the center of this so these need to be uh, smoothed and then fortifications added and the same here. Okay, so my minecarts, they're invisible because of a bug, but they're all full of magma. So I'm going to go and set the first route to go and wait for someone to push the vehicle. And now that she's here, I'm going to ask someone to push the second one just to make sure they're not going to collide or anything. Let's go, let's see. Boom, nice. The other guy's coming with the other one. Okay. Okay, so they can occupy the same spot. Nice. In case this is complicated, again, I have made a, a video explaining how to do this. I'm gonna link it. I don't know why she's carrying it. The track is right there. Why is she... Place track vehicle. Why is she carrying it? Uh... Oh, because I asked her to guide south. Okay, so this is a problem. So, oh, okay, I see. 
So they guide the minecart if they like they they take the minecart in their hands and they move it and they walk towards the destination. If you ask them to guide the minecart to a direction where there are no no mine carts oh no mine tracks. Also now that these are smooth, we can make fortifications here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the second cavern layer to um, get some wood for more ballista parts. Ah, okay, I understand what I did wrong. So my engineer, which is the guy that is supposed to be making the catapults and the siege parts, um, I set him to also be a siege operator. So he's also firing the catapults, which is not what we want. So another thing that I do uh, helps with cleanup with caged creatures that I don't want to do anything with. Because uh, this hallway, once the bridges are down, a lot of creatures start coming in and it can get overwhelming. Uh, so what I do, we have my barracks here. Uh, I add a little room next to it and another room next to it. Uh, so there's this set of stairs that goes up and there's a caged creature stockpile here. So eventually if you leave your caverns open, you're gonna get a lot of like troglodytes and crundles, uh, like so many crundles. Uh, and this system is good because it can just mass dispose of creatures. Okay, so the next part of setting up my defenses is having masterwork ballista parts so we can have masterwork ballistas. This is optional. If you want, you can have just standard ballistas. I don't know if it matters too much, but since I'm going to build this to last, I want the parts to be masterwork. This requires a lot of wood because ballista parts, they can only be made out of wood. Um, and in order to train our siege engineer well enough for them to make masterwork parts, uh, we're going to have to make a lot of ballista parts, but we can sell them to traders and such. Uh, so since I got a little bit of wood here, I'm just going to go here, add new task and make ballista parts and set it on repeat. Someone claimed this. I think it's, yeah. So my engineer claimed it just to make sure I'm going to make it so that only my engineer can use this workshop. So we got only one person training the skill and they're going to make ballista parts. So this is. So this is superior quality, is the little asterisk. We're looking for the sun sign. So it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna open my um, my second caverns again. So I can go and get those uh, pieces of wood. So I signed a cat to this rope here outside. So they act as sort of like, as a watchdog. Um, they can spot uh, thieves or you know, snatchers that can come to our fortress. So I'm gonna make a stockpile with 18 tiles. Yeah, so this stockpile has uh, 18 tiles. So I think it's on furniture, ballista parts. And then on quality, I'm gonna disable everything but masterwork and total quality doesn't matter. So a good way to train weaponsmiths is to go to your forges and add a new task. I think it's uh, siege equipment. I have a lot of copper, so I'm going to make ballista arrowheads out of copper. And I'm going to set it on repeat. I'm going to cancel this copper cage um, order. And I'm going to add my peasant to the this workshop. So only my peasant can do that here. Uh, so I'm going to do that for all my peasants. Whenever I get peasants on migrant waves, I'm going to turn them into dabbling weaponsmiths. This is so that if they have a strange mood, I think it chooses by the, the strongest skill they have. Uh, so even if they're just dabbling weaponsmiths, they're going to make a weapon related artifact. Uh, so once they are dabbling weaponsmiths, I'll just probably put them into my army or something. So I'm checking here and I forgot to do something that I did on my diagram. So each cavern corridor should lead to a different part of the trap hallway. So like, so this leads here, this one leads like here, this one leads here. So that, you know, creatures can just like go here and then go to the other cavern layers. Instead, they would just go straight to our traps. 
but this is not too important. Uh, it's not like a rule. It's more like a guideline. It doesn't have to be followed so strictly. It should be okay. Okay, so I have enough parts to make one ballista. That is masterwork. This does take a while, so really, like, if you don't want to deal with it, just make regular ballistas. Uh, just make sure that when you click it, you expand these and you only choose the good parts here. You see? Masterwork, masterwork, masterwork. All right. You're going to build the first one. Okay, so the ballista's built. Let's just make it face right for now. We don't have any ballista arrows. We're going to have to make them in a bit. In the meantime, I'm going to add a room here so I can store my ballista arrows. And my guys are still training. They're at uh, Master Siege Operator. Uh, so now I'm going to add fortifications to these walls. And remember that uh, these walls, they have access only through my base. So if, if you go underground here, I mean, all of this is underground, but if you go down here, you can see that it leads to my barracks. So whenever I have a Mark's Dwarf squad, I can ask them to come here. I can ask them to station here and I can lock this door behind them. And eventually I'm gonna leave like a stockpile full of silver bolts here. So they have a lot of ammo. As I mentioned previously, what you can do is you can just sell the ballista parts that are not up to your standards if you're trying to get them uh, masterwork. You just gotta be careful not to sell any of the masterwork ones. Just gotta look for the little sun symbol. This one here, so I don't wanna sell this one. So I'm going to add a stockpile for Ballista Arrows right next to the Ballistas here, so they don't have to go far to get them. Ah, I think it's Furniture and... let me just... Siege Ammo. Yeah, that's the one. Stockpile Siege Ammo. So my, my trap corridor layout is usually like this. It's a bunch of cage traps, and then at the end there's a couple really good weapon traps. Because I want to capture creatures more than I want to kill them. Because, who knows, like if you put like a weapon trap in front, maybe you get like a, <laughs> a GCS, not a juicy S, a GCS, uh, you know, which can be really useful. So it's better to, to have it captured than killed. So let's see what he needs. He needs rock, he needs cut gems, he needs thread and bones. I don't have a lot of bones. Do I have any cool creatures to slaughter? <laughs> you know what? I want to make something out of Gorlick bone. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Gorlick bone it is. Can I butcher Gorlicks? I don't know. Let's try it. Um, so dump this guy here into the pit. He's still alive, so... Just gonna finish him off. Ah, uh, where's my... Ah, uh... oh, my military squad was guarding the caverns. No, he's gonna escape. Come on, guys. I need those bones. Gorlick bones. Let's go. Psh. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, just chopped. Ah, uh, the problem is he, he died outside, so I think I, I got a... Go to the standing orders and gather bodies and gather outdoor refuse. Okay. Oh crap, Gorlex are sapient. So you know what? Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna use Crundle Bones, which are, uh, they're alright. Oh, what the f... What, 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 what the fuck? He made an axe out of bone? I mean, that's a shitty axe, but that's so cool. Like, I'm definitely gonna use that in battle. Like, how can I not use that? And it's named Nabrethodek. This is a Crundle Bone Battle Axe. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. 
It is decorated with crundle bone and cave spider silk. This object menaces with spikes of tiger eye. On the item is an image of a giant copperhead snake in native gold. Oh, that's really nice. That's really fucking nice. Um, you cannot make axes out of bone, I believe. Yeah, if I go here, bone, bracelet, craft. You can make like some armor, like helm, leggings, but not axes. So this is something that's so unique that it can only be made from uh, like a strange mood. And now they're like a legendary. Oh, they're not because they were possessed. Huh, okay. I will recruit someone. You know what? Even better. <laughs> this guy... You know, Otsukulban or something. I'm gonna recruit him. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Yes, I'm gonna recruit him, and I'm going to give him the axe that he made. How cool is that? He made an artifact axe made out of bone, so it's probably not gonna dwell in battle. <laughs> it's gonna be deflected by like copper armor but he is gonna use it so i already made my guide make like a shit ton of ballista arrowheads uh, that's not a lot but it's, this is some this is a little bit okay so now we're gonna take this siege workshop here and we're gonna assemble copper ballista arrows so i believe it takes one wood and one arrowhead Oh my god, it's heavy. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I need a, a minecart. Here. Sorry. <laughs> a wheelbarrow. Yeah. I'm gonna make a couple wheelbarrows here. So our setup here should be nearly done. Most of our siege operators are probably trained. So I'm gonna set the direction here. We're gonna set them to prepare to fire. So I'm gonna set the catapults to not do anything now, so my siege operators can hopefully... Yeah, load ballista. There you go. Does it show as loaded? Okay, it shows as loaded. Okay. So, yes. So you should leave it as prepared to fire, so they're loaded and good to go. Ah, but they'll stay here. What if I do nothing? Ah, okay, so once they load it, you can set it to do nothing and they'll just leave the arrow there. So they're armed. They're good to go. So just know that it's a little slow to load them because the, the ballista arrows are pretty heavy so that they'll move very slowly. Uh, so you might be able to get like one or two shots on this corridor on the invaders and one or two shots on this corridor. Another important thing that I forgot to mention is you need to add like a bridge here. And then you add a lever somewhere, because otherwise, if the invaders they have arrows, they'll be able to shoot at your siege operators here. So once they get close enough, you should seal the bridge, and once they move far away, you open the bridge and, and fire again. These guys here, great siege operator, legendary siege operator. So, so this is almost as good as it can get, because the ballistas themselves, like they're pretty good. The siege operators are almost max level, but the arrows are not super good. I think they could be made out of steel and be of better quality, but can't make everything perfect. I'm pretty sure this is pretty deadly anyways. Maybe it, it evaporates or something. Oh. Oh, a snatcher. Where? Oh, okay. I got snatchers. So, you know what that means? Said so this... And this and this to not fire and this to not fire and these three to fire at will so we can finally test this yeah the, oh my god dude, he's gonna kill the ducky let's fight let's go fire we got snatchers coming in fire oh it's gonna miss them Oh, I missed them. Oh, there's another one coming. Where's the middle one? Come on. Let me clear the alerts first so I can see the fresh alert. Bam! Oh, did I miss him? 
Oh, oh, the the hen child is fighting. Oh no. Oh no. The flying copper ballista arrow strikes the stray chick in the head and the and the severed part sails off in an arc. Oh my god. I missed the the goblin. So I missed the goblin twice, but I hit the freaking <laughs> The freaking chick. Oh, and there's one coming from for the Drake as well. Oh! The flying copper ballista arrow strikes the stray Drake in the upper body, tearing apart the muscle. Strikes the stray Drake in the right wing. The se severed part sails off in an arc. Oh my god. Yeah, it's brutal once it hits. Oh! Oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god. Let me see this. Goblin Thief is fighting. The flying copper ballista arrow strikes the Goblin Thief in the left upper leg. So it severed the leg. It severed... Uh, so it severed the left upper leg. It severed the right lower leg. And it severed the left lower arm. And it severed the right upper arm. And it also severed... No. Yeah. And it opened an artery. So one ballista arrow did that to one goblin. And they also pierce. Like, they just keep going. They stop for no one. So now we just deal with them. Get him! Okay, so to be honest, they're snatchers. They're not, like that strong they don't have armor they have like hood and cotton trousers and stuff uh so they're, they're not that you know good it's, it's different than like a goblin siege but it was a good like way to test the system for something right oh okay okay this is good we got a cyclops so we got uh Siege operators are all here. Lock this door. Uh, this should be ready for shooting. And this should not shoot at all. Enough practice, boys. Arm your ballistas. Shoot it, shoot it. Wait, what? Oh, no. Oh, my God. God, you see, this is what I mean. This is why you should have four operators. Look at this fucker. Flying copper ballista arrow strikes the siege operator the left upper arm. So he, he walked in front of the goddamn ballista arrow, man. Oh, he, he dodged it. Who killed him? Yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a stockpile here for ammo, and it'll only be boats, because I only use crossbows for now. And I guess all types of metal should be okay, but not bone or wood, because those suck. And uh, any quality should be okay. So hopefully they'll get these masterwork crossbows that are made out of bone, um, which is a really crappy material when it comes to um, using the bow uh, in melee combat, so like as a blood weapon to bludgeon your enemies. Uh, it doesn't do that much damage, but since they're gonna be behind the fortifications here, then it should be fine. So I'm gonna have to make one change to this uh, corridor here. As you can see, uh, they don't they don't path exactly to the tile that you you ask them to station to. So like if I ask my my squad here to move to this spot. They will probably, some of them might, might go inside, but some of them might go outside. So let me just show you. Yeah, actually all of them went outside. So this is not good, because we need a way to station uh, them. So let me just cancel the station order. And what we can do to fix this is we can make like a stairway down, and we can make a little room here. So we can ask them to station on this little room, and then we'll put a door here. And before they get to the room, we just lock the door. And then we lock this one here. So they're stuck in this middle part. Then a bunch of arrow stacks here. And what we can also do, so 
they made this room here so let's give this a, a test so i'm gonna take the squad ask them to station in this room instead of in the hallway so now yep they went through the hallway so i can just lock this door and lock this door and cancel the station order and now they're just just there uh so in case of a siege i can do that um so please note that they can shoot the the goblins or the invaders outside but the invaders can also shoot them back if they have ranged weapons so this is a risky position it's not like completely safe um so they can get a few arrows to the face uh what you can also do i'm gonna take this room and i'm gonna double it as a uh archery range so go to the military menu archery target so i'm gonna set this zone here archery range i'm gonna select this accept and they shoot from the right to the left so this is okay and then arrowman is gonna train here so gonna go to this barracks here they're not gonna train here they're gonna train the other one oh there you go yeah so now they're they're practicing here so i dug some channels here in front of my archery range um i did it behind them but i, I forgot for a moment but if you dig a channel in front of an archery range so they're shooting from here uh and the boats are traveling uh and they pass on top of the the channeled uh tiles i think yeah you keep the boats um because otherwise the boats they hit the wall and they get destroyed you see like he's shooting and is adding to the list here yep so the boats just fall down here and they get forbidden so you just forbid them and you should be good to go so i'm gonna start mining some gold to increase my fortress wealth because i need to be invaded by some armies or something 12 seconds later oh, oh this is interesting scaly opossum Deadly blood. Hmm. Interesting. Oh my god. It's already here. <laughs> uh, I'm dead. Rich north of the trade depot. Please pull this lever right away. Okay, we're safe. Pull that lever. Seal that shit again. Uh, I see the wrong one. Run! North of the Trade Depot, quick. Okay, so now, cool. So now the Forgotten Beast is locked in this corridor. So that means that <laughs> we can have some fun. So I want to see my guy shoot him first. See if that does anything. Oh yeah, they're shooting him. Fuck him up, fuck him up. And these guys are going to fire boom oh shit it goes to the fortifications oh no oh my god <laughs> oh shit that's why i gotta have trained guys who shot this oh my god and they just left <laughs> oh no they're fucked up man oh i see like guts and shit oh they're fucked yeah the last one got the Yep, and they, they're dead. Okay, they gotta fire this. I forgot to lock the goddamn door, man. Oh, because they're trying to get to the burrow. Okay, sorry. Okay, this might be the killing blow. Oh, I missed. Another one. I missed again, I think. I'm not sure, because there's so much blood everywhere. Wait, are the ballistas doing anything? I see nothing about ballista arrows. Uh, oh no. I gotta get a better layout. They're just killing each other here. Bang. Why are they immune to, to ballista fire? I don't understand. Shoot him. Oh my god. Okay, this might be a bad layout to do it like at the same time. I think I should either use ballistas or Mark's dwarfs. Okay, I'm out of ballista arrows. 
Might as well just let my siege operators go eat something. I'm gonna send in my military. Okay, attack. Kill him. Yes! We got him. Who killed him, by the way? Oh, it's the guy who made the the, the axe. Oh my god, it's the Crundle Bone Axe. They killed the Forgotten Beast with a Crundle Bone Axe. That they made themselves, I think. This is legendary. They they made a Crundle Bone Axe, which I thought was going to be really shitty in battle. And they killed the Forgotten Beast with it. In battle. That's, that's the coolest thing ever. Tearing the scale. Bruising the fat. Tearing the scale. Tearing the scale. <laughs> Tearing the scale, tearing the scale, tearing the scale. Tearing the scale. Hex the Forgotten Beast. Okay, so, in all fairness, uh, the axe isn't doing much. Uh, it's just tearing the scale. I guess it's, it's, the scale is pretty strong. Uh, tearing the scale, tearing the scale. Tearing the scale. Okay, I think someone's gonna come and butcher the Forgotten Beast because I built like a butcher shop. Oh my god! And I get invaded by goblins when I have no freaking ballista arrows. Ah, uh, of course. Oh, it's right when I was butchering the goddamn Forgotten Beast. Oh! Oh my god, it hit this guy right like that center. Aslot with his spoon. Flying black cap. Ballista arrow strikes the goblin bowman in the upper body. Bruising the skin. In the throat. The injured part is cloven asunder. So I'm gonna stop using my ballistas now. Because uh, my guys, they are kind of too scared to do anything. Uh, and I really want to butcher that forgotten beast. Kill this guy. You know what? Uh... Kill all of them. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. And now I can finally butcher the freaking forgotten beast. Ah, man. You rotted away. So this is how I do my base defense. Um, it's not perfect by any means. It has some major flaws. Like the biggest one I've seen is the fact that not only can... Siege operators hit each other as, you know, if this guy is, is trying to get an arrow from here, uh, they're going to pass in front of the other two ballistas. And if the timing is right, uh, they'll get shot in the face with the ballista arrow. Uh, but also, um, if the siege operator is not very well trained, I believe that's the reason, they'll, they'll not, they're not going to shoot straight. So as you've seen, the arrow just like started curving and started to <laughs> enter my... Uh, Mark's Dwarf area here. Um, so there's definitely some improvements that I can make. But the layout is generally safe compared to other layouts. I see a lot of players that access their caverns through the mines that are connected to the inside of their fortress. Which is not really good because that leaves their fortress really exposed. So having a layout like this where, you know, this is the entrance to the caverns which is highly guarded. There's this gate that I can close and I can funnel... Uh, the cavern creatures into this hallway here, which is my hallway with uh, Mark Dwarves and Ballista Arrows. Uh, this is a good method. Uh, also having a lot of bridges so you can seal creatures in like I did with the Forgotten Beasts and the Goblins. Uh, it's good. And this layout means that if I lock this bridge here, my base is completely safe. Um, there's no way nothing can uh, get to it. Not from the caverns, not from the surface. Hey guys, Iggy here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this guide. It's not meant to be a set of rules or anything. It's just uh, me showing the ways I do things in the game, which, as you saw, is really flawed. But this game relies on your designs having flaws in order for you to have fun. Let me know what you think of the format. This time I decided to not go with the voiceover format and go with a more organic, you know, explain as I play kind of format. And also, I'm really sorry about the length of the video. 
I think it's almost at like 50 minutes. As a viewer, I don't like really long videos. I prefer videos in the 10 to 20 minute range, but with guides as long as this one, it's almost impossible to make a short video like this. But yeah, let me know what you think about this uh, type of format. I'm currently working on some other Dwarf Fortress tutorial videos, some that are actually shorter than this one, so I think you guys are gonna like it. Oh yeah, and also I've been getting some feedback from you guys. Um, I changed my microphone, so let me know how this one sounds for this type of video. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Jesus Christ. Fuck, man. Oh my god, it's the fire alarm test. There's one bridge that. Oh my god. <laughs> Way to the trade depot is three tiles wide. Jesus Christ. Okay, I might not record this video today. To our base from the trap hallway. I like to make them nice and big, so. It's really easy to differentiate when they're open, when they're closed. Oh my god, stop! Okay, so I like to make my bridges nice and... I'm gonna add a temporary stone workers workshop here. So I'm adding a temporary stone workers workshop here. And since I'm gonna build furniture anyways, Yeah, I'm going to wait until it goes off so I can start speaking because I don't want to get interrupted again. <clears throat> yep, <laughs> there it is. 